Korean man who fought for the Empire of Japan, the USSR, and Nazi Germany during World War II. An insane journey that took one man from East Asia all the way to the beaches of Normandy on D-Day. <sighs> Boy, that escalated quickly. The story has spawned history books, a documentary, Korean novellas, a movie, and some crazy Canadian real estate ladies ad campaign in 2018. But is any of it true? Nope. That's the episode. Goodbye, folks. Come on, man! If you go on Wikipedia right now and you type in Yang Kyung Jung, you immediately will see disclaimers arguing there is no evidence of his existence. Yet we have two things a unbelievable story, and an iconic photo. How can the man not exist? Today, I am Detective Craig, and first I'm going to tell you the so-called story of Yang Kyung Jong. Then afterwards, I'm going to dig deep into this rabbit hole to see if there's anything true about the story. Hey everyone, I just wanted to let you know I now have a Patreon account found at www.patreon.com slash the Pacific War channel. Over there, you can find exclusive Patreon episodes and podcasts based on suggestions from patrons, and other benefits like early access to all of my content, live hangouts, your name in the end credits, and much, much more. So please go check it out. Yang Kyung Jong was born in 1920 in Shinyojo, part of modern day North Korea. At the age of 18, he was forcibly conscripted into the IGA, and then he was sent to the Soviet Manchurian border region to serve in the Kwangtung Army. He fought at the Battle of Kalkin Gol, where Georgi Zhukov introduced the Japanese to fully mechanized warfare. Yang Kyung Jong found himself captured by the Soviets, and he was sent to a Siberian gulag. The Soviets faced an emergency, and Order No. 227 offered Yang Kyung Jong the opportunity to ditch the gulag and to join a penal battalion to fight for the USSR. Yang Kyung Jong found himself fighting at the Third Battle of Kharkov. Fuck. Field Marshal Erich von Manstein pulled a rabbit out of his ass and he won an incredible victory, shattering 52 Soviet divisions. Yang Kyung Jung found himself yet again a prisoner of war, and yet again he was offered to fight for another nation. He joined a Ostbataillona. Hitler's armies had been bled so badly on the Eastern Front, they were now recruiting former Soviet citizens to fight on their behalf. Yang Kyung Jung found himself fighting for the 709th Static Infantry Division as a member of an Ostbataillona along the Schuburg Peninsula right in time to defend the Germans on D-Day. Ah oh, shit, here we go again. The American 7th Corps defeated the German forces at Schuburg and afterwards Lt. Robert Brewer of the 506th Parachute Infantry Regiment, 101st Airborne Division, reported capturing four Asians in Wehrmacht uniforms. What are you doing here? And not in a racist way. One of these was Yang Kyung Jung, who was sent to a British POW camp, then a POW camp in the United States, where he told his incredible story before being granted US citizenship and spent the rest of his life in Illinois until he died in 1992. Here is the iconic photo, presumably of Yang Kyung Jung captured near Utah Beach. So Detective Craig, tell us is any of this real? Through my investigative work, I believe I have a pretty accurate assessment of Yang Kyung Jung's case. I would first like to thank Marty Morgan, the author of Down to Earth, the 507th Parachute Infantry Regiment in Normandy, and the Americans on D-Day, a photographic history of the Normandy invasion. Marty Morgan is probably the best expert on this entire story, and a lot of what I found out was through him, so credit is due where it is due. The story of Yang Kyung Jong originated with an interview between the famous historian, Stephen Ambrose, and Lieutenant Robert Brewer, who served E Company, 2nd Battalion, 506th Parachute Infantry Regiment of the 101st Airborne Division. This same man was portrayed in Band of Brothers, by the way. Now, Brewer gave an ambiguous account about capturing four Asians wearing Wehrmacht uniforms after the Battle of Cherbourg. Brewer said no one spoke the language of the four men, but someone figured out that they were Korean. Now, Brewer was not an ethnographer. What Westerners thought was Asian in the 1940s is rather vague. The four men could have been Turkestani for all we know. Brewer did not know what happened to them, but stated they most likely were sent back to Korea. Ambrose took this account and he added it in his 1994 book titled 
D-Day, June 6, 1944, the climatic battle of World War II. However, Ambrose did not just give the account word for word. No, he added many details to it. Ambrose added context as to how he thought a Korean would have found himself fighting at D-Day. Why don't you back it up with a source? My source is that I made it the fuck up! Ambrose wrote it seemed the men had been conscripted into the IGA, fought in the Soviet Manchuria border skirmishes in 1939, were captured and forced to fight for the Red Army, then captured by the Germans and forced to fight in France. He ended it stating it was highly likely the Koreans were sent back to Korea, just in time to fight in the Korean War. So Ambrose's 1994 story gradually circulates on this relatively new thing called the internet. In the meantime, something else hits the internet. An iconic photo of an Asian man wearing a Wehrmacht uniform captured after the D-Day landings. The official description of the photo states, Capture, Jap in Nazi uniform, France, fearful of his future. This young Jap wearing a Nazi uniform is checked off in a roundup of German prisoners on the beaches of France. An American army captain takes the Jap's name and serial number. But what relation does this photo have to Ambrose's story? Honestly, nothing at all. Marty Morgan believes the man in the iconic photo is not one Yang Kyung Jung, but instead, a Georgian from the 795th Georgian Battalion, which was composed of Georgian Ostrupin troops. The man's ethnicity was probably that of East Turkestani. In 2002, word of the story became more popularized online, and in 2004, the iconic photo also began to circulate heavily on the internet. The media in Korea came across both and said to themselves, Wow, this is neat, let's investigate. The news site DPK News performed an investigation. During the investigation, an avid reader of DPK News submitted biographical details of the said man in the photo. He gave the name of the soldier as Yang Kyung Jung, his date of birth, the story details, and that the man was eventually released as a U.S. citizen and lived until 1992 in Illinois. The journalist who received this information asked for sources, and of course, the man gave absolutely none. The DKB News article noted there was no way to determine if the person in the iconic photo was the supposed Yang Kyung Jung. The article sprang forth even more interest, prompting the Soil Broadcasting System to air a documentary titled The Korean in Normandy. The documentary team searched for records of Korean POWs during the Battle of Kalkingol records of Koreans serving the Soviets or Germans, and any records of Korean POWs in British or American camps being released to the United States. They found zero evidence of the existence of one Yang Kyung Jung, nor anyone who even fit the story description. We ain't found shit! Thus, it should have died on the spot right there, but it didn't. But wait! There's more! From the 2005 documentary sprang forward even more interest. In 2007, author Zhou Jiangre published a novella titled The Human Mask, which told the story of Shin Gilman. The story ends with Shin Gilman, who was conscripted into the Japanese army at the age of 20, as a prisoner of war in Normandy, then transported back to the Soviet Union and eventually executed by firing squad. Another novella called D-Day by author Kim Byung-in was released in 2011. The main characters are Han Daishik and Yoichi, who met as children as the sons of a Japanese landowner and the house's housekeeper, harboring animosity towards each other. They grew up to become marathon runners representing Joseon and Japan. As they experience the war together, they feel a strange sense of kinship and develop reconciliation and friendship. The Kim byung in story somewhat inspired a movie that same year titled My Way, probably the most famous telling of the story of Yang Kyung Jung. Then in 2012, an unknown person created the first Wikipedia entry for Yang Kyung Jung, using all the information obtained from these people springing even more life into the story. The following year saw two historians add to the mythos. These were Anthony Beaver's book, The Second World War, 
and that of defense consultant and author Stephen Salaga in his book, The Devil's Garden, Rommel's Desperate Defense of Omaha Beach on D-Day. Both authors took the story, name, and iconic photo and expanded upon the mythos, piecing all the information together about how Yang Kyung Jung went from battle to capture and so forth. Now that's pretty much the story, but I would be remiss if I didn't mention the bizarre controversy that broke out in my home nation of Canada. Dear God, there's more. No. My home nation that is full of so many controversies today, dear sweet mother of God. Debbie Holland, a city councillor in St. John, Newfoundland, was absolutely wrecked online in 2018 for an advertisement promoting her real estate business, stating, Korean Yang Kyung Jung fought with the Japanese against the USSR. Then he fought with the USSR against Germany. Then with Germany against the US. Want an Asian who fights for you? Call me. A really bizarre advertisement and it was made by her husband. Yeah, Debbie Hanlon's husband, Oral Muse, came up with a lot of controversial and offensive ads. Hanlon was surprised at the amount of backlash she received since the ads had been on the internet for over four years running. She claimed to be a victim of cyberbullying and trolls. I am a victim of a hate crime. So yeah, that happened. So in the end, Yang Kyung Jung's story is basically a game of broken telephone. What began as a vague story from Lieutenant Brewer about four Koreans, who were probably Turkestani, found around Utah Beach, led Ambrose to pull a Herodotus, and he expanded the story. And it hit the internet, alongside a photo of most likely a Turkestani captured on D-Day. The Korean media picked it up, ran the stories, and stated everything was pretty much false. Yet this did not stop a few trolls from leaking random facts and expanding the mythos. The story got even more popular, sprang forward Korean novellas, a movie, a Wikipedia page, and two historians pretty much got duped. Then some crazy newfie thought it was a good idea to slap it on an ad. So yeah, the story of Yang Kyung Jung is basically just a tall tale. Why isn't it possible? It's just not. Why not, you stupid bastard? 